stated, many times commented, but I think that today this is reality. BHA and TPG are two highly complementary businesses. BHA is strong in mobile and TPG is strongly strong in fixed. Both companies have been enthusiastic challenges, driving great choice and value for Australian consumers over the recent years. And together we have the potential to bring a strong and truly convergent competitor into the market. DHA has an incredible mobile network coupled with products that have made us famous as a consumer champion. Just to, to, to say one of them, the $5 roaming, which is a product that we will maintain in the future, has been a game changer and is still a product that that is, is a significant value in the market. Over the recent years, we have been investing strongly in a spectrum and also on our network and growing our customer base, reaching now 6 million mobile customers. At the same time, TPG has a fantastic position in the fixed broadband market, much love brands and an extensive and new modern fiber network. I have incredible respect and admiration for David and his team for what they have achieved in this business. By bringing together our these two complementary assets and talent teams, we will be stronger together and will be able to accelerate each of our core strengths. TPG and BHA teams each have an obvious passion for delivering the best value and services to all our customers. And now, together, we will be able to deliver that even in a greater way. Effective competition comes from a strong and sustainable challengers, not just lots, lots of small players. While both TPG and VHA are in individually doing a great job, and we are both doing a great performance in the last years, I think that the combination of these two businesses will just accelerate uh, this performance and be able to deliver even more value to the Australian market. It also positions us well at the gate of the 5G era to invest strongly and to deliver amazing products to our customers. Together, and also with the strong support of our shareholders, we plan to create with TPG a multi-brand company, bringing together a number of brands that Australians love and trust. There are no plans to change any of our existing brands. Obviously, we will be working closely with ACCC, which we need to review the transaction. It is for the ACCC to consider in due course, but we believe that there is a compelling case that this merger delivers a strong competition for the benefit of Australian consumers. I have never been more excited about this opportunity for us to deliver more. And uh, you will all see, uh, have seen the analyst presentation. I'm, I'm going to be now uh, together with David and, uh, and uh, both of the teams ready to take as many questions as you have on this uh, fantastic news. Thank you, Iñaki. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel the request, please press the pound or hash key. While waiting for questions, please assemble your questions. Your first question comes from Tony Boyd from Financial Review. Please ask your question. Oh, thank you. Um, I wonder if you could give us some indication of the uh, size of the special dividend that will be paid by TPG uh, before the deal goes ahead. Um, Tony, hello. Stephen Bamfield for um, the TPG CFO here. Uh, we're unable to quantify that at this time. It will obviously depend on the TPG's cash flows between now and completion. Uh, to give you a guide, our, our debt balance is currently $1.27 billion as at the end of uh, the, uh, 31st of July 2018, our FY18 year end. Um, and the target net debt on completion is $1.67 billion. Uh, uh, so the size of the dividend will depend on our cash flows between now and completion. It will also be reduced by uh, transaction costs and by the cash that we use to capitalise the Singapore uh, business uh, prior to its separation. Uh, we expect that much closer to uh, the 
uh, the completion of the transaction to be able to give a guide to shareholders at that time uh, of what the uh, what the range possible range of the dividend will be, but too early at this time, I'm afraid. And just just one other quick question, if it's okay. Um, what, what could you just tell us the implied multiple that is uh, uh, that's the earnings multiple for TPG uh, inherent in this transaction? The, uh, the enterprise value of the combined group, and it's a 50-50 split, is approximately $15 billion. So an enterprise value of um, half of that for uh, for TPG. Right. Okay. Okay. And so how does that compare to the current enterprise value of TPG? What is it? Uh, well, if you look now, it depends uh, when you look at the share price. If you look at the uh, undisturbed uh, uh, share, share price, uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that incorporates the yeah, the, the undisturbed uh, share price. What do you mean before before it went up today? You mean or uh, yeah before uh, before the before the news uh, leaked um, uh, about a week ago. Right, okay. So you're talking more like 570 than... Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Your next question comes from Max Mason from Fairfax. Please ask your question. Uh, morning, guys. Just a couple of questions from me. Uh, on this particular transaction, I note that um, Hutch and Vodafone Group will have two years where they... Um, are not allowed to uh, sell or buy shares. Would you be able to give us an indication of, uh, you know, the five to ten year sort of commitment from the from the parent companies? And uh, a question for for David. Uh, you know, you've uh, obviously been you know with this business for uh, a number of decades now, and um, you know was and you know have had um, a fair amount of control over its uh, success in that time. Was the opportunity too big? Because um, obviously you're sort of being personally diluted to, I think, around 17 or so percent. Was the opportunity too big to uh, to pass up? Okay, I'm going to take the first one, and then uh, David can uh, can answer the second one. Um, <coughs> The, the two-year commitment, I think, is just uh, is just a reflection of the commitment that uh, Hutchinson and Vodafone have to to the market. These are companies that have been investing in Australia for for many years. Uh, there is there is uh, definitely a commitment to to maintain the brand for for the future, but it's also a commitment from both uh, large companies to be supporting uh, this new company. Uh, from their position. So I think that, you know, whatever you see in the agreement is just reinforcing the fact that these two companies are really looking at this market from, from a position of, of, uh, of, uh, of staying here for the long run. Um, Max, so David here. Um, I'll be the chairman for the new, for the merch school. Um, and I have my um, the share on escrow for two years as well. And yep. now I have full confidence in Inayaki and the uh, the management team from both sides, which are highly uh, complementary. Uh, so you know, I I'm I'm still here in Sydney. So yeah. Uh, and if I might just uh, ask one more, um, it's, um, I think it was the intention, still the intention to uh, build out PPG's mobile network, which is being built out at the moment. Are you planning to, I guess, run a, a dual brand strategy, kind of like, you know, uh, maybe a Qantas Jetstar uh, sort of strategy and uh, and use the, the TPG rollout as... Um, and from, from memory, those towers are very much installed around where your fixed line customers are uh, as a NBN bypass. Um, we, we are building a very good, uh, very dense small cell network that, that is highly complementary to the, uh, the Vodafone Hutchinson network. So that would serve the, um, the combined customer from both sides very 
very well. So it will create a very good network for the future. Thank you. Your next question comes from Jennifer Duke from Fairfax Media. Please ask your question. Hi guys, I was just wondering if there will be any redundancies as a result of the merger and whether or not the 999 plans are still going to go ahead from TPG. In terms of uh, your first question, the, 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 the good thing about this is a merger around uh, combining two complementary businesses. Uh, TPG and us, we do very different things. Um, we do mobile, they do fix. We run a mobile network, TPG runs an incredible fixed network. And um, ultimately this combination is around synergies in the technology, the opportunities that that brings. By bringing together a, you know, a, a single retail uh, network, a single fixed network, a single mobile network. So ultimately, it is about the synergies of the of the of the technology. Uh, what what we are looking uh, in the future. David, um, we will leverage on the Vodafone uh, Hutchinson uh, mobile network and create value for TPG uh, fixed line customers. So it, it is what we are talking is how we can benefit our customers, the Australian consumer. That is the ultimate aim. How do we bring value to the consumer? And we want to create a good value proposition by combining the fixed and mobile and offer to the consumers. Sorry, does that mean that there won't be a 999 offer anymore? Um, we we have to refine the uh, our business process. We continue to uh, to roll out our small cell network to complement with the uh, macro uh, VHA macro networks. Okay, thank you. Your next question comes from Paul Smith from the Australian Financial Review. Please ask your question. Hi guys, um, the, the questions initially for David, but also for Inyaki after that. David, you've obviously um, run TPG um, for, for many years and with a, a great, great degree of autonomy, autonomy, you always surprise us with acquisitions and that kind of thing. Um, from a personal level, how different is it going to be as a chairman rather than uh, the CEO of an, an organisation? And for Inyaki, um, how do you envisage working under the chairman um, like, like David, I, I'd be interested from you, from both your perspectives on how it's going to be to work together. So far, so good. <laughs> um, I, 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 I think I, I have a great respect for him and his team and, you know, because when you look at the two teams, they, you know, we have a lot of good people, a lot. Uh, is one of the best, if not the best, in this country. So, you know, we are we are very excited with the combination of the two companies moving forward to create value for our customers. Yeah, and uh, you know, look for me. Uh, first of all, I think is a is a is is a privilege to work with somebody like David. Um, I think that you know, for the last four years, we've been working together on, on projects that are well known around our uh, transmission product and you know the TPG's uh, uh, part of TPG's mobile customers are on, on our network through an MVNO agreement so we had the opportunity to work closely for some time and I I feel really privileged to be able to continue this this exciting project with uh, with TPG and working closely with with David and also with the TPG team, which is uh, is an extremely capable uh, team that has been able to create an amazing business from zero in a market where you know the power of the incumbent is is very strong. So I I have nothing but respect, uh, admiration, and uh, really looking forward to continue this journey. Thanks, guys. Your next question comes from Corinne Richard from CBS. Please ask your question. Hi, David and Inyaki. Does the Huawei ban affect the TPG mobile network build out and future 5G launch plans for both of you? Can 
you repeat the question, please? Does the Huawei ban affect TPG's mobile network build out uh, in terms of using the equipment in the network and same for Vodafone? And does that affect the 5G launch plans for you? Look, uh, I, I don't know how it affects uh, TPG plans because those are plans that I don't know. And I will not know until this gets approved by by ACCC. What I can tell you is that effectively reducing the choices uh, that uh, the market has in terms of of uh, moving forward with uh, with with uh, new technologies is, is always uh, always has an impact. Uh, but at the same time, because we are combining both businesses and we are combining two infrastructures that are very complementary, what we are doing here is enhancing dramatically the number of choices that we have in the way that we design the future architecture. So. I think that ultimately, you know, the decision uh, around the vendors that could be chosen is is a constraint. It's actually more a constraint on the market. Uh, I do think that this merger gives us uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, to be able to 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 choose uh, other vendors if if we have to. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Bonita Kolovov from Australian Associated Press. Please ask a question. Hi guys, I just wanted to ask you, um, the new merger, merged business is going to be TPG Telecom Limited. Um, can you just clarify what this means for the Vodafone name long term? I think that it uh, means... Uh, that both names are really good. Uh, what it means is that the company will be called TPG Telecom, and it also means that all the brands that we have as a combined merger with all the strength that they bring will be available to this company. So it's, it's the best of both worlds, actually. Right, thank you. Your next question comes from Tom Westbrook from Reuters. Please ask your question. Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, firstly, can I just clarify, I understand correctly what TPG shareholders actually get from this deal, that they'll be given, like, one share will become half a share in a new entity or 49.9% of, of a share. Is that right? Uh, uh, Steve Anfield here. Uh, the, uh, TPG shareholders, the number of shares that they will receive in total will be 49.9% of the total shares in the merged company. The actual ratio of the number of shares you have is, is, uh, is uh, the absolute number of shares you have is actually not particularly, uh, uh, particularly relevant. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, let's say that the, 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 the agreed ratio is that TPG shares uh, TPG shareholders will receive 49.9% of the total shares of the company. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I guess more broadly, uh, why do this deal now? Is it, Were competitive pressures getting too much? Uh, were margins being squeezed too hard? What's, what's the reason for doing this deal today? Well, that question you can ask it any time, you know, whenever it happens is why is it today? Uh, it happens today because today is when after working together uh, for years and understanding the opportunity uh, that both businesses would bring together is when we decided to do it. Um, it is obviously something that I'm pretty sure has been in David's mind for many years. And I know that it has been in my mind for many years as well. And I think that there is always a time where these two things come together and it happens. That is that is that is the reason of why today. And also, you know, today is a, is a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs> and I, David, are you able to also clarify why would TPG continue with the rollout of its uh, mobile network now that um, you know you've got access to voter funds? If you look at our uh, raw our footprint, we cover very dense area uh, where our customer, you know, our hotspot, and that would complement that would complement the uh, VHA network because we need 
high capacity in that area and also the performance from our small cell network, I think that, that you know, when you add the two together, that will create a better service for the customers. Okay, thanks. Your next question comes from Angus Whitley from Bloomberg News. Please ask your question. Oh, yeah, good morning. Um, Inaki, I wonder if you could just clarify um, your answer to a question I didn't quite hear the answer earlier on. Um, is, is Vodafone committed to its investment in this merged entity beyond 24 months? That is a question that you need to ask uh, Vodafone. Uh, what I can tell you from my point of view, having worked in Vodafone for many years and also um, uh, looking at, at the way that Vodafone is looking at this investment, I can tell you that uh, they are really committed to, uh, to this business. As, as an investor or as, 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 a, as a brand? I think both. The brand is clearly, the commitment is uh, 10 years. And as an investor, you just have to look at the the amount of capital that Vodafone has placed in this in this infrastructure over the years, and that's something that usually links the investors to uh, to the asset for a long time. <laughs> you, you called um, when you're describing this deal at the top of the call. You called this deal something that would create Australia's leading challenger telco. But that doesn't sound like a very ambitious plan for, for Vodafone. You're used to being number one or number two in most mobile markets around the world. Why why do you want to stay here? You've carved out five, almost five billion of debt. Um, you're not making money. Like, what's, what's the ambition here for Vodafone? Can you repeat the question? You, you described this as a, as a deal to create a leading challenger. And that, that's not a role that Vodafone um, takes on in most markets around the world. You're usually number one and number two. Why do you want to stay in Australia where clearly you haven't been successful? But that again is a question for Vodafone. I, I, I want to be in Australia because uh, I'm going to be part of a business that is going to be a significant change in the market that has a huge opportunity and i can tell you that the vodafone view is the same uh, vodafone looks at this opportunity uh, as an incredible opportunity to leverage on on, on a big investment on, on a state-of-the-art technology on leverage on a brand that is currently the number one brand in mps around the mnos and in a market where if you look at where the incumbents are uh, it is a good time to go hard, so I think that this is really what we are looking at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your next question comes from Julian Bachkowski from IT News. Please ask your question. Hi, I just wanted to take you back to labour costs. You didn't really answer the question there before in terms of redundancies. Do you expect any kind of labour cost savings under this deal? And can you say what they would look like? Um, this uh, this transaction, as Inyaki's already said, this is uh, this is about two complementary businesses coming together. It's not about uh, it's not about redundancies. Uh, we. Um, do expect to realise substantial synergies from the uh, um, f from the merger, uh, mainly around the combination of the networks, the buying power, the um, and and uh, and uh, and the cross sale opportunity. So, would you expect labour costs to go up or down in aggregate across this deal? I wouldn't expect labour costs to go up as a result of the deal. But not down. Our both our companies are very well run companies with very lean cost bases. Today, both companies have a continued focus on uh, trying to do things more efficiently 
and the combined group that will be in the DNA of the combined group we will always be looking for efficiencies that's part of what we do today and that will continue and just on back to Huawei as well um, what impacts is, is this really going to have and was it a trigger uh, for this deal to, to get off the runway yeah, it was not a trigger actually because you know this uh, this announcement came uh, quite recent. Um, yeah, I, I I see it more as an impact on the long run around uh, the market capabilities to to use technology. I understand very well the the decision, uh, and I ultimately you know we as a as an Australian player we play by the Australian rules. Uh, at the same time, we need to make sure that there is enough competition so we also get the best technology in the in the market. Thanks. Your next question comes from Jennifer Duke from Fairfax Media. Please ask the question. Sorry, guys, just one more from me back on the 9.99 plans. Um, given given these discussions have been in the works for some time, was that just a marketing ploy? Was there ever actually an intent to launch plans that were that cheap? Um, Jennifer, we have put a lot of money in the spectrum and in the planning on the on our on our staff to roll out the very dense mobile network um, and you know as a company we have to look at what is the best for our shareholders and for our group um, so you know with the with the merger of the two companies I think we are going to be a leading challenger and we are going to be very aggressive. You know, we are going to bring value to the consumer. So that's what we're going to do. Which is not at nine ninety nine. Um who knows? It could be much better when you value add because uh, you know, we have so many um we have close to two million fixed broadband customer per household. So the customer, captive customer base is enormous. So when you value add and bundle with the mobile, it could be could be even better. Who knows? So we want to create value proposition for our customer base and for the consumer. The market is massive, massive. The opportunity is massive. So they are tremendous you know, they are headroom to move in this marketplace. That's why we are very excited, very excited with the combined group in the long run. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you for all the questions today. That will be our final question. I would now like to hand the conference back to Inyaki. Please continue. Well, thank you very much to all of you. I think that, you know, during the next hours and, and days, we will be available to take any questions that uh, you may have. Uh, very exciting news. Um, thank you very much for, for being with us today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude our conference for today. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect.